Welcome to 1856 First Church Pella, Iowa podcast. Oh, my name is Bob Johnson and my co-host Brienne Patel is sitting right across from me. And this is our first episode of 1856, the podcast from First Church Pella. Brianne, it's our first time doing this, so it'll be interesting as we march through this first podcast of what we're all going to say. So why did we start this podcast in the first place? Yeah, I think this is going to be a fun adventure, Pastor Bob. Um, I am appreciative that you want to stay current and share encouragement throughout the week for our listeners. So staying current, you're probably referring to my ever advancing age. No, I'm referring to technology. Yes. I mean, I was the guy last week who didn't know really what a QR code was. Oh, good. I was going to ask you if you found out what that was. Well, I have, but uh, we have no QR codes right now in this podcast since, after all, we're not videotaping it. But so what do we try to accomplish when we're doing a podcast like this? Well, I'm hoping that we can just provide a little insight to your sermon, go a little deeper um, with the information that you provide us on Sunday. And I hope eventually we'll um, have some willing guests that will come on to and uh, share their insights. Well, that sounds good. I think normally we're going to try to do this in the middle of the week, but as schedules turned this week, we're here on a Friday afternoon. So hopefully a lot of people will listen to this before Sunday. But yeah, just to do a check-in, is there uh, any field trips or anything that you've done today or yesterday? Yeah, no. Uh, my family, I took the kiddos over to Camp Creation over in Lighton, Iowa. Well done. If you ever get a chance to go that direction, uh, they have a little museum that takes the kids through the days of creation. Um, they even have a dinosaur, a little walkthrough, uh, and then they also had a science experiment in wow. fact i'll tell you what the leaders of that experiment attend first church so you're telling me lighten that doesn't have a stoplight or a gas station or a grocery store has camp creation over there they sure do you got to go a little further south than the town of lighten okay but well that's exciting i thought i'd covered all of lighten but obviously i have a little bit more well, last okay. night I took my wife all the way to Coralville really? for a concert. And uh, we went to a concert. We haven't been to one in a long time. But, you know, when we first started dating, we went to Christian concerts. So that was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And so here we were last night at a Mercy Me concert. And wow. then the newsboys were there too. And we had a blast. And we got home real late last night. And we were tired. Hmm. I have to say the concert was really good. And we've been going for many years. And I'm trying to think, what's changed over all these years? Well, number one, they're way louder <laughs> than they've ever been. And I don't get this, but the seats are smaller than when we first started going. I'm sure that has no bearing on how big we are. But those seats were smaller. But we had a great time. It was great hey. fun. And uh, these groups have been around for a long time. And uh I noticed looking around that everybody wasn't that young anymore. Interesting. What was your favorite song? Oh, my favorite song is uh, Happy Dance uh, by Mercy Me, of which probably isn't their deepest spiritual song. I asked my wife, what was her favorite song when she was coming out? She said, When Grace Got You which is kind of a fun song too. Did you do your happy dance? um, I did the happy dance when they sung it last night, but fortunately none of that was videotaped. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) Well, hey, uh, let's let's talk about the series that we're in for a little bit. We're in a series on Revelation and we're talking about the seven seals. And you know, this week we're gonna do uh, chapter six or a portion of chapter six, but Anything that uh, you have memory of from those first two sermons or anything that you want to ask any questions about? Yeah, I really have enjoyed this series. Uh, One thing that stuck out to me from last week was you had said that it was the first time that tears in heaven were mentioned. Yeah, it's interesting because when they were looking for somebody to open up the scroll, You know, all we have is the text there, but obviously it turned into somewhat of a desperate scene because there was nobody to open it in heaven or on the earth below. 
and and John began to weep. And so there was obviously some deep emotion that went through him that brought him to that time of tears because somehow things had to be fixed in this world. And if nobody could open that scroll, who would fix it? And I'm glad in our reading that we can see that one of the elders says right away, don't weep, don't weep. There's a plan and there's one coming forward right now, which is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And so uh, what beautiful news and what beautiful things that we have to look forward to um, that Jesus is going to initiate this process uh, and it will end with all things being made new. Praise the Lord. You mentioned a lot at the beginning that, you know, nobody can solve these problems. We got people coming into office saying they're going to solve the problems, but ultimately it'll be Jesus. And you had talked about judgment and redemption. Yeah. And so we're really going to dive into that this week in chapter six, because actually Jesus is going to open the first seal. Now, I believe that these things have not happened yet, but they are still future events. And uh, I believe it's describing a time that the Bible refers to as the great tribulation. And uh, we're going to see the first four seals open this week, which are characterized by horses. Sometimes they're referred to as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The Bible doesn't actually use those words, but they are horsemen. And uh, and we'll go into them in detail this week, so I'm not going to give too much of that away. But make no mistake, at the end of all these judgments that are coming, Jesus will have made all things right. Redemption comes through this judgment. You know, good news comes, good news comes in the midst of all this strife because what Jesus does is he offers us salvation from judgment. That is the good news. And we really put a magnifying glass on it when we read the book of Revelation. Yeah. Would you share just a little bit on why going through the book of Revelation is so important? Well... One of the reasons that I've been so fascinated with, quite frankly, is because when I grew up, we never talked about it. And then when I got a little bit older and I first delved into it, I thought, I don't understand any of this. And nobody was really talking about it in our church. And I heard so many people from a young age say, well, we don't understand it, but it's all going to work out in the end. And literally, I think I was like 13 years old, I was corresponding with a man in prison and he wanted to do a Bible study. I think he forgot that I was like 13. And uh, he was a relative of one of my family members, so we did have somewhat of a connection. And uh, he wanted to study Revelation, so I literally got a commentary from our church library and I started writing, uh, going back and forth in this Bible study. I understood virtually nothing, but I went through the whole book of which was advantageous for me. And then it took many years for me to realize, okay, there's, there's all these different views on it. Some people are very passionate about this view or that view. And I thought, well, the only way that I'm going to learn more is just to delve into it for myself. And then I had somebody give me very good advice. And this is good for all of the Bible. Try to read it literally. Read Revelation literally. Read the Bible literally. And then see what you find out as you do that. And that's been very helpful to me. And so um, I've been very refreshed by the study of it, by the reading of it. Revelation is the only book in the Bible that begins with saying, we'll be blessed if we read this book out loud. Mm -hmm. And... um, I just don't want there to be a bunch of fuzz on it so that my congregation one day would say, we don't know anything about it because we never talked about it. Right. And then just one more thing with that, Brianne, that I always, Mm -hmm. that I love studying about Revelation because there's so many connections to other places in the scriptures. And so even as we lead into this week's message, we're going to be continually referring back to Jesus, what they call the Olivet Discourse in the book of Matthew. And so you can draw all these strings back to these other passages that make Revelation come alive, and it helps explain Revelation. Yeah. And so, um, to me, that helps us become the biblical bloodhounds that God called us to be. Uh, I like that you call us biblical bloodhounds. 
Yes. <laughs> so what is your goal for the whole series? What would you want um, the congregation and those who tune in online to take away? Well, number one is absolutely positively judgment is coming. And so these next three years, we're going to take the seals this year, the trumpets next year, and then the bowls to the end of the book. These are This is a, a time of judgment. It's coming. It's going to come unexpectedly to people. A lot of people aren't going to really know what it is. And so here we have the good news. And we need to share the good news because what happens is, as Christians, people who are following Jesus need not fear this judgment. But there are many when it comes upon them, they won't know. And we're here to go and tell. And so if anything should prompt us to evangelize, prompt us to get the word of God out to all nations, it should be under the backdrop that there is judgment coming. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Man, I'm really looking forward to the rest of this series. Um, I see you got a few things there. I got a few table. things on my list. Yeah, everything's mm -hmm. new today, and so yeah. I just I just pushed my timer, and I should have pushed that a little bit beforehand, but it's pastors okay. never go over, so I won't never. go over in this mm -mm. either. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, you know, first church people, they got these little bottles this past week so that they can fill up those bottles when they come back because this helps our Pathways ministry. Did you take one home to your family? Yes, yes. Do your kids like to fill this up with change? Oh, they like to fill it up with lots of things, sometimes not change. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we're one. <laughs> That I think I just put a check in mine, but uh, we didn't have enough change around the house. But we'll 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 see about well, that. Well, I but, think that's where they had that QR code for. Oh them yeah, too. that is the QR code. I'm uh -huh. actually looking at it here, but uh, we'll bring in real money for that, so people can bring that in. What this week or next week? Yes, I think that was what she said when she dropped them off. So that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. See, I so don't you have? Uh, there's there a movie that we're showing here? Yeah, we're we were asked by uh, some good people in the city of Pella if we would uh, show this movie called grid shock it's a film about sex trafficking in iowa it just disturbs me that there's a film about this because this shows the reality of this terrible thing that's going on here in iowa so i'm hoping that people come to it it's 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 not a first church thing per se we're just the venue for it i hope many people will come from all over the town because it's very disturbing and uh, it's happening right here in front of our noses. You know, I used to think 10 years ago when I heard the word sex trafficking that, that always referred to like things happening in other countries. Yeah. And when Patty and I were living in Minnesota, we had a, um, a group in Rochester that was talking about this and they were telling us how Minneapolis was a huge hub for sex trafficking. And we were astounded as well as disgusted. And, um, and then, of course, I shared in a sermon recently that there's about 40 million slaves right now in the world, and half of them are sex slaves, which should make us sit up and think, mm -hmm. what can we do about this? Mm -hmm. And this has come to our own country. So I'm hoping many people will come and see the film. And, uh, and then there's, they've also got some other people coming, uh, the uh, chief of police is coming from uh, Pella as well as the Marion County Sheriff. I think it'll be a valuable okay. uh, experience for people. So when, that's Tuesday night. Yeah, okay, Tuesday. 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Great. Thank you for sharing that. And because it's a church, I'm sure there'll be coffee and cookies too, so maybe that'll bring some people. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think we have a do we still have some parking spots, or you do know, we have some things we got? You know, time parking at First Church is uh, they go really quick, and and they're all gone. Those parking spots are gone. But people who still want to park here during tulip time, we have part of our parking lot that's devoted to tickets that we sell in advance for the for the whole duration of tulip time, and then we have an in and out lot every week, oh, yes. every every day, so mm -hmm. they can come in and they could park and then they could leave. And um, so parking is at a premium around here. and People love to park in our lot since it's so close. So we try to accommodate as many as we can, but our parking lot is only so big. Oh, that's great. Do we need any more volunteers? 
we always need volunteers. So, you know, for those people who haven't signed up to be a volunteer with parking, it's actually a lot of fun. I agree. You just sit there and you and you open the rope so the people can come in. And then when you're sitting by the sidewalk, you get to say hello to everybody coming by. And then they'll go by you and they'll say, oh, those people from Pella are so kind and so nice. And that's exactly what we want to give off. We want to welcome everybody who comes to our great city for tulip time. So if you can smile and say, welcome to tulip time, you are qualified. Yes. Mm. Well, what do you think as our first podcast episode? How is this all shaping up? Well, it's going you? good so far because nothing has failed. And, uh, you know, we've got a few other things coming up here, Bria. We've got a David Phelps concert coming up next Saturday night. Ooh, it's sold out. That's awesome. And uh, this is uh, done in cooperation with the uh, food shelf of Pella. So, again, we were asked to host this. We, of course, uh, said, yes, we'd love to do that. David Phelps is an awesome singer. If people haven't heard him, just go on YouTube. The guy is amazing. I've heard him for years, used to sing in the Gaither Vocal Band. So I'm, I'm building this up, but if you want tickets, they're all gone. But uh, we're gonna have a full packed house that night. It's gonna be a lot of fun and a real blessing to all those who come here. Nice. You know, I was downstairs in the church and um, our ladies have been cleaning out closets. Oh, yes, they have been. You know, sometimes the ladies here on staff, they start cleaning out closets. So there's a whole slew of stuff all over tables. I kind of chuckle at it because it all looks really good to me. And I said, well, what is this all for? Well, they said, you know, we don't use it anymore. And so we mm -hmm. might as well get rid of it. So rather than bring it to the thrift store, they're going to make it available to anybody who we'll maybe give a little donation for it. Oh, That'll nice. all go back into the kitchen fund. Oh, excellent. But so if you're curious about what I just said, just go down to the church basement on Sunday or whenever you're here, and maybe there's something that you need for your kitchen or dining area that will make it more complete. You could check mm -hmm. that out when you come. Yeah, I think they said that a garage sale will open up Monday, right? To yes, well... I have a feeling some people will be snooping down there on Sunday. Sure. Yeah, you know, another thing, Brianne, for the past few weeks, we've had different families bringing their children up in front and claiming the promises yeah, of the beautiful. Lord for their children, which is great. We have a infant baptism this Sunday as well, and so that's very, very exciting in the life of our church. And I love to see these beautiful families and, and parents and grandparents and sometimes even great-grandparents coming uh, to experience these because our goal is, is that the faith continues to move from generation to generation. And uh, that'll be happening again on Sunday, too. It'll be a, a great day together. Yeah, I love watching and seeing the families that come and support and how you ask them to stand. And then you ask the congregation to stand as we support these families as they raise them in the faith. So yeah. it's a beautiful picture of the yeah. body. It's a, yeah, it really is uh, very nice. So this week, you know, we had... Uh, I've had a lot of significant meetings on Monday night. We had our consistory meeting, our church board meeting, and I always love to get together with these folks. Uh, they, they help oversee the church. We have a meaningful time of uh, in the Bible, as well as sharing uh, what they've seen God at work in over the last month since the last meeting. And every month, my heart is encouraged to see what... Uh, these 12 uh, individuals share about what they think God is doing in the life of their, chur uh, of their church. And uh, this week was no exception. It was really great. So we had a great consistory meeting on uh, Monday night. And mm -hmm. we had a long staff meeting on uh, Wednesday of this week. And we hadn't met in a long time, so we had a big agenda. All good stuff, yeah. Did uh, you endure it okay? Yeah, I survived, yeah. But I mean, always like getting together. Um, I find it always enjoyable. It's good to see what we got going on at church and how we're engaging with each other um i just think it's really neat how this church is very open and allowing you know as a place for people to come and to use the space and they are i do feel like we're one of the friendliest churches out there well that's that's good to know i know when uh, the i closed with prayer after the staff meeting on wednesday and one unnamed staff member the first thing that came out of their mouth was well that was a long meeting 
but I know that they probably <laughs> went that with the uh, best of intentions. And um, yeah, then yesterday, uh, yesterday I had a long meeting because we hadn't had a meeting in a long time with the Sending Network board. Oh, exciting! You know all about the Sending I Network, do. don't you, Brian? Yes, I get to help out with that. So yeah, so the Sending Network is the new denomination that we began a couple of years ago, and. Yeah, we've about got two years into this, and uh, it's been interesting uh, because we're kind of building the bridge as we walk on it. And so every meeting brings about uh, some good discussions. Sometimes we're dealing with uh, some issues that, well, we haven't dealt with that before because we're a young denomination. But I, I'm just so grateful for the people that I get to work with around That's that good. table. And, uh you know, I got Pastor Andrew from uh, from Knoxville and mm -hmm. Pastor Steve from Newton and Pastor Kevin and Darren from over here at Pellet Third Church. And and uh, I can honestly say, just as uh, uh, the Sending Network, we want to do ministry together as friends. Well, that starts around that table. And these, these folks are definitely friends, and uh, yes. I count them. Uh, you have a good I, leadership. Yeah, I hold mm -hmm. them in high regard. So, yeah, we had a good meeting there yesterday, and uh, got a lot mm -hmm. done with that. Yeah, we have some pictures out there on our different gathering times on the Sending Network uh, website. Yes, and yesterday we also uh, voted to receive our 13th church. 13th, that's good. And uh, it's New Creation Church uh, up in uh, Newton. Mm -hmm. And that's pastored by Robbie Robinson. So oh, Robbie is a great brother in the Lord doing a super job. That's a church plant up there that's been going for a few years now. And we're thrilled and honored to uh, welcome them into the Sending Network. Yeah, I believe he's been to our church. Yes, he's not only been to our church, but mm -hmm. he's preached at our church a few times. And uh, yeah, he's uh, he's very gifted and we're very grateful for that. Exciting. So. Um, what do we have to look forward to? Have we covered everything? We've got tulip time coming up in two yes. weeks. Is that something your family looks forward to, Brianne? Um, most of us. Um, we all enjoy to participate in the parade. Uh, my husband prefers to stay away from the parade, but he does enjoy the food. The food is good. I'm already living in anticipation, and really I have to avoid it because it's too good. So... Um, I love every year seeing all the people that come to town. I, I cannot get over how many people come in. And of course, the mm -hmm. tulips right now are but looking great. wonderful. And I'm hoping that some mm. stick around for uh, tulip time. Yes. Well, I think, don't you have a special role in tulip time? Well, I, I have the privilege of doing a couple things that I prepare for. Um, I, I do the emceeing on the uh, night nighttime shows on the um, tulip tower which is a lot of fun get to introduce yeah. the court and whatever the entertainment is for that night and so uh and then i get to MC out in the street when the street uh, scrubbers come down there and and so yeah it's just a lot of fun again i love the mm -hmm. encounters with the people who come from out of town and and then as soon as i'm done i normally run over to my little box on the west side of the square and then i'm one of many announcers uh for the parade out there and uh and mm. yeah that's a lot of fun for us too yeah you have a great voice for announcing yes, my mother always said i had a face for radio and so that's why i'm doing this right now <laughs> oh dear well i hope we have lots of guests for tulip time and i hope they also pop in to see us at first church yeah and and we also have something going on during that uh during tulip time uh, a guy by the name of John Neifert in town, he helps lead what they call Tulip Time Outreach. And so they actually have seminars. They hold it here at First Church because we're so close to the square. Um, but they actually help teach people how to do street evangelism and, yeah. and go out within the crowds. And so have a great, great appreciation for what they're seeking to do to bring the good news of Jesus to people uh, that come. And uh, they have a guy coming out. I, I don't remember his name right now, but he's from a ministry back in California where actually the oh. very town that we lived in called Living Waters. Uh, Ray Comfort leads that ministry, but uh, they have a guy coming out here helping to lead their training this year. Oh, that'll uh, which, be great. Yeah, that'll be really good, too. And a lot of um, it's, it's really valuable. Anybody can come. You can just walk in, come. Uh, they have these seminars during the day, and then they just send you out to practice what you just learned. So you don't have to buy a ticket or anything. Just come right over to First Church, and that's there for you. Hmm, well, that sounds great. Well, I think we'll begin to wrap this first episode up here. 
Brianne. I do look forward to people coming on Sunday morning to church. Yes. Uh, every week, it's just such a delight for me to wake up on Sunday morning because uh, I used to think when I grew up, church was always the same. I knew the order of worship by heart. We sang certain songs at certain times and things never varied. Now, the good thing out of that is because of those routines, I learned some things. I learned the Lord's Prayer early because we said yeah. it every week. I learned the Ten Commandments by heart from the King James Version because we said it almost every week. And I learned the Apostles' Creed. So those things were all very good that we did repetitively. But there wasn't a lot of variance. So I find here in our church, I'm always so excited to sing, to sing yes. the songs Great music. Uh, that we have every week. I'm so grateful for the different things that happened, like a baptism this week, yes. and that we get to celebrate God's goodness in the life of our church. I and love to see how many people serve on a Sunday. That's amazing. Everything There's involved. people all over the place. And then at, at, at First Church, and people who are listening to this know, but it's the third Sunday. And where this tradition yes. started, I don't know. <laughs> But on the third Sunday, we have homemade cookies. The other mm. weeks, not homemade all the time. But this week, homemade. There's nothing spiritual about it, but they're really good. Yes. And we're grateful for that. So, hey, Brianne, thanks for helping us get kicked off today for yeah. this first podcast. We're doing it on Friday, but next week we're going to do it in the middle of the week, yeah, right? Yeah, we hope to. We hope to get it done in about Wednesday. Time yeah, time. and then we'll get it out to the people, and hopefully this will be of value to them, and we'll keep figuring out how to do it as we go along. Yeah, well, I think if people are interested in, in visiting, they should check out our website at uh, frcpella.org, and we're here, 930 Sunday mornings. And that's a beautiful thing. And as we go along in this podcast, who knows, maybe in a few weeks we'll have a special guest, huh? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Sounds great. Well, folks, you have a great day, a great weekend, and we hope to see you in church on Sunday. <laughs>